after apparently crying in his sleep the prior night. Jimmy wakes first and discovers his bag of prison hooch is missing. In response, he appears to get so furious he causes the lights to go wild and leaves notes saying wine, monster, cunt, wrath. All that work around production's door. Ben confesses that he threw out the hooch and surprisingly, Jimmy cheerily admits he's over it. He starts his good mornings to the other fish with, did you notice how mad I am? While smiling. As Jimmy rambles to Brian through the morning, he reveals that he's been homeless and attempted suicide several times and that production might have warned him about defaming people to the camera. A TTS comes through pretending to be Summer. I don't know where I am right now. I need help. Please help me. I'm screaming and begging for help. Please, this is Summer. That makes me really sad, actually. Remember, Summer never ends. You play that song. Because it's thanks to Summer we solved that mystery. The big one that got us all to chill the fuck out. TJ and Brian say the house feels emptier without her, and Brian wishes he'd gotten to try her baking. Taylee greets her tatriots as soon as she gets up. She spends most of the day sleeping and says she doesn't know why she's tired. It might be the fever or a lack of caffeine. Following through on her villain plan from yesterday, Trisha takes Brian's copy of Berserk and hides it in bedroom three. Brian notices it is missing and asks his girlfriend CK to send him strength. Jet gives Jimmy a swear jar and tells him if he swears he has to penalize himself in chips. So he begins to talk slowly and robotically, like the G-Man. Expecting to have the ability to play the CDs all the time. To avoid using swears as filler words. Jet tells TJ that he should seek better connections with the fish. He asks TJ about his life goal of being a writer. TJ says he's been writing since he was 17. Alone, TJ says he always feels on alert in the tank and can't relax or put his mind on anything but the moment. To spend his nervous energy, he imagines Goodbye Sober Day by Mr. Bungle and jumps around. Jet asks the fish to sing Christmas carols to wake up Shinji and Jimmy. To make a connection with Cole, TJ gives a pep talk to him while the other fish eavesdrop. He tells Cole to do his best even though he's not as motivated by the money. Cole wonders why production asked TJ to do that and decides to turn up the asshole knob. Shinji notices his glasses are missing, so Jimmy searches the house. Cole asks Jimmy about his job at the paper mill after previously announcing his intention to make fun of him by offering to hire him at his dad's business. Instead, Jimmy disarms him by offering to round up shirts from the other fish that fit Cole, since Cole said he doesn't have enough. Ben tells Taylee that she's doing well and has many fans. She is startled as at that moment Jimmy finally tries the combination TTS gave him, N-I-C-R, to open the padlock and recognizes its true purpose. Hang on, Taylor. Once we open this door, it's game over. The shortcut into bedroom two. Jimmy apologizes to the audience for not believing them. Ben tells Megan that her emergency contact wanted her to know her Roblox account has been hacked. She cries and says the show is a lot harder than she thought it would be. She says she's ultimately more upset because she is homesick and receives watercolor supplies and happily sets to work on painting. Cole pours goop into Brian's and Trish's possessions. When Trish discovers it, she shows Jimmy, who tells her he saw Cole in there. Brian says it wasn't him, and that he wants Jimmy, Trish, and Shinji to understand that he wouldn't have done it because he wants a formal alliance with them. Pranks strike the other fish. Cole says he found an egg under his bed, which Brian put there, and TJ says he found tuna under his bed. Taylee says... Someone put her underwear on the freezer. In actual fact, Cole picked it up off the ground when she dropped it, moving her laundry and placed it on the fridge. TJ and Brian move the furniture around so TJ can gallop freely. And TTS teaches him to associate La Bambo Dominican with a request for his galloping dance. Jimmy is pissed because production won't give him mixtapes he made for the show, so they send him a retard helmet. 
and Shinji tells him he's the funniest person in the house and hangs out with him because he's making the house less boring. Cole is annoyed that Brian had tried to talk to JC and plans to get back at him by talking to Trisha. Trisha says she is torn. She doesn't get along with Cole, but hated the sexual bit she was doing with Brian. She eventually admits to Brian that she doesn't want to be remembered for that, and he agrees. Things wind down and Jet requests on Twitter. Can someone make fake screenshots of JC's Instagram story saying she misses Cole and wants to date him so we can show him? JC, forgive us, but this is how we do things over at Fish Tank. He'll be fine. Cole says he is going to try and recruit TJ to be his ally. He invites Jimmy, the only fish still awake, to help him with a mystery in the fireplace. Chris Lynch arrives and is confused to see a chimney sweep sticking out of the chimney. Brian shares with Chris that his hair used to go all the way down his back very recently and proves it with his ID. Scott begins the karate lesson for the day. Scott calls Jimmy out for not knowing what slapping out is, even though he said he's done MMA for 12 years. Cole damages the Black Santa in the living room, La Bambo Dominican place, and TJ grins widely and bobs along to it, even though he can't jump during the lesson. During wall sits, Scott says that Megan is the only one with good form. Brian cheers for her until she outlasts the other fish and wins 100 chips. She receives the Jocko Willink belt and a wave of supportive messages. The recipient of the belt must wear it until Scott returns. All the fish congratulate her and the session ends on TJ, finally free, able to dance to La Bambo Dominican. On Twitter before his visit, Scott says he is interested that Jimmy mentioned seeing red when he fights. So afterwards, Jimmy is pulled aside for a real MMA class with Scott. Josie gives TJ a pep talk about the workout and they jump together. This would be the first time I'm mentioning the chat, but I need to. Chat blows up, demanding he get more recognition for being so responsive to the audience today. Brian tells Shinji, TJ, and most relevant to the conversation, Cole, that the most obvious choice leading up to the elimination will be eliminating Taylee, because the audience won't miss her sleeping all day. During the chip count, Cole, with 1,050 chips, tells Jet his intention is to give enough chips to his favorite contestants to protect them if necessary. Jet tells Trisha to flirt with Cole for chips. 70 chips total for more physical, obvious demonstrations of flirting. TJ and Megan have a lively conversation about their favorite music and their lives. And Shinji rubs down TJ because he's been galloping all day. After suffering from tobacco withdrawal for most of the day, Brian receives the first cigarette delivery fish toy, as well as his missing berserk book, discovered by Shinji. Taylee bursts in and says that someone dug through her underwear to hide her belt in the bathroom. She says she thought everyone was cool with each other, and even though she knew this was a possibility on Fish Tank, she wants to stand up for herself. Shinji comforts her, and they think Cole did it because he's been unusually polite. Jimmy worries that he isn't ruled out as the person who has been messing with everyone's stuff and prepares for war. Oh, Shinji. What are you doing? Uh, getting ready for war. Brian warns TJ that Taylee is convinced he touched her underwear because they both sleep in the bunk. They are interrupted by La Bambo Dominican. Afterwards, Jet puts TJ to work covering up the graffiti on the mural in exchange for a whopping 220 chips. Trisha's flirting with Cole appears to make Brian livid. Cole happily accepts the attention, although he knows Trish was put up to it, and says he is loyal to Taiwan. Trish tells him she thinks he's a good-looking guy, and they go through the motions of romance anyway. Jimmy complains that he's had a long day and can't be entertaining without swearing because it's using up all his concentration and needs a cigarette delivery from his fans, if he even has any, he says. He becomes increasingly defeated while Brian receives a small fortune of them. Ben asks him and Shinji to sing Silent Night. Silent night, holy night. Oh, and Vance delivers cigarettes to Jimmy while he is singing.
Jet takes Jimmy aside and tells him they just wanted to prove to him he could talk without swearing and returns his chips to him with a bonus 50 chips. Gotcha. You know, I didn't watch Sesame Street for eight years for nothing. Taught me well. While Cole and Trish cuddle and flirt in B3, Jimmy eavesdrops from the crawl space while his allies Brian and Shinji close the doors behind him. Jimmy eavesdrops there for almost 40 minutes. While Cole and Trish cuddle and make out, the topic of Jimmy comes up several times. Trisha says Jimmy's face was scary during the speed dating challenge and that he talks all the time because he didn't get enough attention growing up. <laughs> Brian marches in and says he's looking for a lighter, but doesn't confront Cole, and later says he won't punch Cole in the face over a woman he's known for six days. TTS tells Cole and Trish someone is in the crawl space, so they leave the room. Check the crawl space in room two. Someone is listening, JJJJJ. <laughs> oh, no. It's Brian. Oh my God, Brian, get out! Know this game. Jimmy scrambles out of the crawl space, almost losing his pants in the process. Cole comes downstairs, and Brian fist bumps him. With an intense look on his face, Jimmy calls Brian over at the bar and tells him that no, he wasn't attention starved as a kid. He says his entire life he was oppressed by negative attention leading to detentions, expulsions, and eventually arrests. When Trisha comes downstairs, he smuggles a bag of grits upstairs and whips them into Trisha's bed. He says Cole betrayed his country for a Taiwanese spy and betrayed his brothers who gave him all those chances. Trisha is surprised to enter B3 and find Jimmy standing next to her filthy bed. Then the demon emerges. I want my people to talk shit. Should have realized that the fucking crawl space is wide open. Use your head next time. What? No. Don't play down. I don't like what you're talking about, Jimmy. You did this? Yeah. Why? What do you think? I don't know why. What issues do you have with me? Think about your conversation. What conversation? Cool. What was Cole? Talk shit on me, talk shit on Brian. I never talk shit about mm -hmm. you. What did I say about you? Yeah, just a wrong assumption. It's just a same old bullshit. Mm -hmm. uh, no one's gonna listen to Jimmy as he rambles on by the fire. I mean, hey, you're kind of right. I wasn't gonna buy the fire, now was I? I don't even know what the fuck <laughs> you're talking about, because I never even talked about you. My brother in Christ, I can hear everything from my girl's face. Okay. So no I was just talking about coal no, the whole no, time. No, no. I never talked shit about you, so please yes, enlighten you me. Yes, you what did I say? Oh, when he stared at me with those big wide eyes, he yeah, was so scared, he was so scared. He talks all the time because he didn't get enough attention. I mean, why do you I think never I said that? Oh, yes, you did. You oh, about. yes, you did. Yes, you did. Don't you lie. Why do you think I brought that up with Brian? You think that's just coincidence, child? His white ass eyes. And he talks about, so oh, he talks so much because he doesn't get enough attention. I know. Were you under there? What do you think, retard? You're just stirring the pot because. Yeah. <laughs> I know, sir. I didn't stir first. Didn't stir first. You just had to use your brain cells. That's it. Okay, and I never even said that about you. Yes, you did. I said you have oh, big yes. ass eyes and you have a scary look. I bet Jimmy has a thick retard cock, Trish, find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a good one. I mean, I don't know what this fool's talking about. That's really my main concern. There comes the Cali girl. I knew you had it in you. <laughs> I'm just Great honestly job. thinking you're just jealous because you didn't get any. No, I literally don't care. I'm okay. <laughs> you is straight tripping. That's what you're doing. And you is straight retarded, child. How? That and I know what the fuck I said. No, clearly you fucking I don't. I do. You lying. You lying. I am not lying. You lying. <laughs> so you kissing Cole was all a show. Yeah. This is what you're just assuming. Oh, was it? Oh, was it? Cole did I knew it was. like Brian's pee pee. J came J on really J fast. J this all started when Cole <laughs> caught Jimmy trying to sneak in illegal shorts. <laughs> I mean, hey, I just want to remind you, you had a fine bottle of lotion there. Okay. 
Well, dust is easy to vacuum now, ain't it? Uh -huh. And dust is easy You're to clean. Weird. You're weird. No, You're eh, weird. you get that way when you live my life. You're weird. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm naturally born this way, you see. Jimmy played cool. It's your turn on the Trish train next. <laughs> Oh, lovely. Kobe. No, oh, let's stomp it out, Jimmy. Doesn't even grab the vacuum. Trish is so mad right now. Finish her, Jimmy. It only costs 70 chips to kiss her, by the way, if you're interested. Jimmy looks like Peter Dinklage if we wasn't a midget. Once alone, Jimmy summarizes. He is not mad about Trisha kissing for chips. He is mad about Trisha making fun of Brian's life and for making fun of him. He says he wouldn't have even picked her during the speed dating challenge. He only did because Summer was taken. While Jimmy vacuums his space on the couch as well as Trish's bed, TJ visits and he says, You're a good man, Tarzan. Don't forget that. Thank you. You too, Jimmy. Brian consoles Trisha. He says she was really convincing and he says she warned him before she flirted with Cole so he played up being annoyed. Brian tells Jimmy that he knew Trisha would be acting and furthermore that he was lying earlier in the day about eliminating Tay and wants to eliminate Cole as always. Jimmy visits Taylor when the bar opens and apologizes for getting grits on her bed and says he feels sorry for responding to what Trisha was doing when he now believes it was all only an act. Trisha cries in her room, then says Jimmy is only jealous because he couldn't get in on that action. 